Good afternoon, all. I'd like to welcome you uh, to day three of our Disability Awareness Week, NI. And today for lunchtime talks, we have Headway UK. So we'll have Melanie, who is going to introduce some of her team and give an overview on Headway UK and how they support individuals, families and carers with brain injury. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Melanie to give her presentation. Thank you, Melanie. Thanks, Louise. So I'm Melanie Bowden. I'm the Network Support Manager here in Northern Ireland for Headway. Pamela Bell is one of three of our uh, Acquired Brain Injury Service Coordinators. And Emma Doherty is uh, one of our volunteers and part of our Northwest group. And uh, today we're going to tell you a wee bit about brain injury. Emma's going to share her story. Pamela will tell you a little bit about what we do uh, in the Northwest and also across Northern Ireland. And then I want to tell you a wee bit more about the, the bigger picture of Headway UK. So we've got a, a, a presentation which we'll share with you now. So. OK, so this is the brain, obviously. Everybody would recognise that. And it's a small organ, but it controls absolutely everything that we're currently thinking of and loads more we don't even know. It's monitoring on our behalf to keep us in this meeting just right now. The human brain is an intricate organ and it contains about 100 billion neurons and 100 trillion connections. Who ever counted those? Fair play. <laughs> and your brain is command central of all you think, you feel and you do. The two sides of our brain look very much alike, but there's a huge difference in how they process information. There's a right hand side and a left hand side. However, despite their contrasting styles, the two halves of the brain don't work independently of each other. So these are just a few facts about the brain. Um, I suppose you can see it weighs about three pounds, it's 1.5 kilograms, which is really very, very little. It has the texture of blancmange. I don't know many of us eat blancmange nowadays, but it's that sort of wobbly jelly type, uh, burnish jelly texture. So it does sort of move about and it continues to grow to the age of, of 20. It's over three times as big as the brain of other mammals that are of a similar size. And each side of the brain has got different things that, that it would manage. Um, the left hand would interact maybe more with pro problem solving, maths, writing, and the right hand side would favor creativity, art, music, that sort of thing. The largest part of the human brain is called the cerebrum. And other important parts you've maybe heard of are the cortex, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. It's protected by a skull, cranium, and a protective casing made up of 22 bones that are joined together and they fuse once you've been born and, and start to grow up. It's constantly dealing with hundreds of messages from the world around you and from our bodies and telling our body what to do. And it gets messages from the five senses and the messages travel from nerve cells all over the body, up and down the nerve fibers and nerve cells to the brain. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on all the time, even whenever we're fast asleep. And it also has a protective three layers of tissue that float in special shockproof fluid. So that's just a little bit about our brain. Everybody's brain is the same. So brain injury, therefore, you can see coming up on the screen that there are a myriad of things which can cause brain injury. Some we can have, we can reduce the risk with regular monitoring of our blood pressure, for example, watching our weight, taking regular exercise, reducing our stressors. Uh, we can always wear protective equipment when working on building sites, hard hats, for example, cycling, scooting about, um, taking care of crossing roads, not uh, looking at our phones while we cross, um, having working carbon monoxide monitors um, if we're using gas appliances, and always getting checked out if we've had a fall or a hit to the head or just feeling generally not quite ourselves. Some causes obviously you can see there like road traffic accident, accidents and assaults and can't really be prevented. And this can lead to temporary or longer lasting injury to the brain. And that's called an acquired brain injury. So this is a definition from the World Health Organization 
just to tell us what a acquired brain injury is. So it's damage to the brain, which occurs after birth. So it's not something that we're born with, or it's not a disease which causes degeneration over time. And it can be temporary or permanent, and it can cause partial or functional disability and psychosocial maladjustment. Those are very big words, but it just means that something is affected in the brain. And even after a minor head injury, brain function can be temporarily impaired. And this is sometimes referred to as concussion, which I'm sure you've just heard about uh, in the news over the weekend with the footballer. I'm not really a football fanatic, but there was a, 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 an engagement of heads on a match and uh, one gentleman was um, badly injured from that. So this can lead to difficulties such as headaches, dizziness, fatigue, depression, irritability and memory problems. And we can through various means like the MMR and CAT scans that you can see in the bottom of the slide there, that's a CAT scan showing um, a slice through a normal brain. And you can see in the right hand side where there's been a bleed and there's obviously some death of tissue there. But we can also observe this when we're checking over someone, if someone maybe has had a fall or has hit their head or whatever, the changes can be subtle or very obvious and they can last for a short time or become permanent. So these would be the effects of brain injury. There's an awful lot of things coming up. And if you're thinking about all the things that your brain does, obviously a brain injury can affect any part of us. So it can be a physical thing. So actual physical mechanics of how we get about. It could affect our cognition, how we think, how we learn and how we remember. And it can also affect us emotionally and behaviorally how we feel and, and how we act. And maybe things are, are different from before that the uh, brain injury came around. So there's a lot there that you can see and many more besides it's just giving you an idea of the effects of a brain injury. Although these uh, stats are maybe a couple of years out of date, the um, trends are still, still current. So you can see from, from this slide on the right here, um, there's over 10,762 folk in, in this part of the world have been affected by an acquired brain injury. Female injuries are tending to increase um, and still males are one and a half times more likely than females to um, have a brain injury. And it's probably the nature of the type of injuries that they have, like a road traffic accidents, assault, that kind of thing. Um, and you can see that stroke uh, is also a significant part of acquired brain injury. So there's a lot of admissions. Um, and in Northern Ireland, there's a regional uh, rehabilitation centre in Musgrave Park. There's also a major trauma unit now in the Royal Victoria Hospital. So everybody who has a major trauma can be dealt with quickly and efficiently and with the right people at the right time. And then it can be signposted on. And once the acute process has been dealt with in a hospital, then people who maybe have a longer term brain injury then are moved out back into the community. And that's part of where we, we would support folk. So that's where I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, put on Emma, who's going to tell us a wee bit about her journey um, with her acquired brain injury. Okay, Emma, just whenever you're ready. You're, you need to unmute yourself, Emma, just. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. Um, my, um, I know, brain injury journey started in November 2016, when I was in um, a serious road traffic collision. Um, and before that, I didn't actually think I knew what a brain injury was. Um, I think I'm quite smart, but I used to genuinely think when you heard on the news that someone um, had been in an accident and had a head injury, I used to think that that meant they split their head and they had to get stitches. I'd, I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard that. And so, um, so then I was in the Royal for a while. I don't remember. I don't remember my time in hospital, but I wasn't. I was told I was in the Royal, and then um, I got transferred up to Atlee Galvin to Spruce House for like the 
neuro rehab um, facility that they have there. Um, and then it, because it was around Christmas and I don't think they like people stay in, in hospital at Christmas, I got out just before Christmas um, because I have two wee boys and wanted to spend Christmas with them. Um, so then I was home. Um, so then I came, um, became aware of Headway um, probably about six months after my accident. Um, and I was um, referred from the community brain injury team that, um, that I was working with and that I would still have input from. Um, and it was brilliant, Headway was the best thing because I think um, after my accident, um, I couldn't work and I couldn't drive. And because I don't, I can't really work very well in loud places, so I can't, and I can't drink. So um, I couldn't go to the pub or go to a restaurant. I, I couldn't do a lot of things. And and it, it just got very lonely. And, and um, I just didn't really have that many people around anymore because work takes up so much of your time. So I had my work colleagues um, before, but I wasn't working and And just everyone sort of fell apart a wee bit, you know, fell away. So Headway was great. So we used to meet um, when we could in um, Hollywell and Bishop Street. And it was every Tuesday morning, and sorry, every Thursday morning. Um, and it was great. And we did, um, sometimes it would be like therapeutic things. So sometimes it would be like art therapy or, or things like that. Um, and then other times it was um, like they taught us about meditation and about yoga and things that we can do to help us relax. Um, it's, and it's good too. And then sometimes we just had a chat and they were always like sometimes they were the best ones you just have a chat and like you met loads of people from all different backgrounds and all different um like they're, they're like brain injuries are all different they i remember someone doctor told me one time that they're like snowflakes and everyone's different um so you get to meet lots of different people and like the people i met in headway are still like my really good friends and i really like them and then now because of covid we've been doing it over zoom which i think has worked really well and we get to, um, you know, we just still get to meet up every week and to do different activities. And, and I get to make a quiz every so often, which I love doing. And they're <laughs> and, very good quizzes too, can I say? Quite yeah, tricky. Eh? Quite you know, every time they say they're too hard and then I try and make them easier. <laughs> um, but Headway's brilliant. I love Headway. And I would, would they save my life. I would have been lost about them. Okay, Emma, thanks very much for that. Um, can I just say, if anybody has any questions, you can pop them into the chat and we could maybe um, answer them at, at the end, just if things are maybe popping up to you. Uh, so we're going to, um, Pamela's going to join in now and uh, tell us a wee bit more about Headway just in, in Northern Ireland. So. Yes, thank you, Melanie. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, so my name is Pamela and I'm one of the ABI services coordinators and um, it's myself and two of my other colleagues, um, Kelly and Steve, we cover um, the five trust areas. And this is the support that we offer to individuals who've been affected by brain injury. And um, so we run several outreach groups within each trust area. There is also three cares and um, networks throughout Northern Ireland. We also offer training. Um, when we were meeting face to face, we would have had training sessions um, where we would have been giving people a wee bit more of an understanding of brain injury and the effects that Melanie covered um, at the beginning. And we also um, have been offering a counselling service as well throughout Northern Ireland. And um, as I say, that was in conjunction with Epilepsy Action and Child Brain Injury Trust. And um, so in, in terms of the Western Trust and um, what we've been delivering in terms of a virtual program, um, we moved to a virtual program in um, March, um, once the, the new restrictions came into place. So um, as Emma said, they meet every um, Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. And that is an idea of the programme that is sent out to all of those who participate. And they would receive that programme and that would be for the quarter. And then they access the meeting each week on Zoom. 
um, and my colleague Steve would send the link the, the day before. Um, so you can see Emma's quiz is there um, as part of the programme, and um, which is great to always enjoy some healthy competition. And um, it's a service user led program. So we concentrate on reducing social is isolation and peer support. And particularly after brain injury, um, a lot of individuals are affected, their social communication skills are affected. Um, so particularly there, there's a couple of sessions um, where we would be looking at a speech and language therapist would join us. And we would be looking at doing different memory exercises and different exercises that would promote best you know brain cell repair and also decision making and also increasing people's attention span so um as well as the activities that we have listed there we also um had steve had created um the hunt for gold game um which um looked at three particular um well, three particular scenes really and challenges where the um, participants had the opportunity to debate in one of the tasks, use art, um, and they also had to research in one of the, the rounds, and then they also had to, to find items. So it was um, an educational game, but with a certain element, obviously, of, of fun as well and healthy competition. Um, another activity the group really enjoyed participating in was making these lovely gem trees that you see on the bottom bottom left hand corner. Um, this these were sent out to um, all of the participants, and a lady came on and guided the group through how to make these. So ideal again at this time of year as gifts and um, or just that sense of accomplishment that they were able to achieve this and to um, complete, complete the task at the end of the four weeks. So we are excited to announce the new horticulture programme which is going to be taking place. Um, also we received funding through the Public Health Agency um, and this horticulture programme will be taking place within the Western Trust and this will be during February and March next year. And um, so we, um, as they are very excited about this, it's, it's going to be a new hybrid programme. So again, it's going to be delivered on Zoom. And um, we have a mindful and mindful coach, mindfulness coach and horticultural therapist joining us for those eight weeks. Um, and it's really looking at gardening and nature and the benefits. Um, really, so each person will receive a pack in the post and then, as I say, the coaches will come on each week and talk them through the process then of growing and creating their own spaces. And OK, that's, that's great, Pamela, thank you. And Emma, you heard that first about the horticulture, so get in early. <laughs> yeah, get your name down. <laughs> um, so the way so, and and uh, yeah, so John, you had said about a regular meeting schedule with clients. So you can see there what, what we showed in the slide that we meet regularly on a Tuesday uh, over Zoom. Does that answer your question? It, it absolutely does. I'm actually thinking of um, a, a person who's actually a colleague who I think would benefit hugely from this, um, had a brain injury as well. And often struggles um, at times just with cognition and um, I suppose even isolation this at this current period of time. So would really benefit from this program. Okay. Um, so what's the way, how do you refer or recommend or make that connection? What's the most effective way of doing that? Pamela, maybe you could chip in there, like the referral. Yes, yeah, certainly. John, yeah, we can email um, you or if you know your friend is happy your colleague is happy you can pass on um his email details and then as i say we can forward a referral form and as i say if you just complete that form and then return it to our sales there's my email if you, want to, if you could drop me the details i could send them on to him and have a wee chat as well so um, that would be very very useful yeah yes of course john thank you 
And at the end of this presentation, we've popped our details on too. So even if there's no referral form, you can just email and just make that query. So Louise, you said, can you give details of Headway and DCS DC Council? Yeah, sorry. Do you do you have a location um, or a, a base per se, you know, prior to um, COVID and post COVID? Yeah, well, Emma, where you where you met, um, sorry, so you, you met regularly on a Thursday before in yeah. Hollywell, was it? In Hollywell Trust on Bishop Street. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm not sure if it was really a base though, because it was not, we really just rented a room. Yeah, so, so, um, so we rented a, a, a room there and we also had um, like a, a, a space in the, there's a community brain injury team that are affiliated with the Western Trust, but they have actually moved from where they were before this to maybe Spruce. They're in Spruce now. Yeah. They're based so, the, they had been based in um, the Foyless Wilney Resource Centre, but they've moved now um, recently to Spruce House, so they're there. So whenever we are allowed back out into the community again, we will re-establish ourselves. <laughs> but at the minute, we're sort of between between two places. Does that answer your question? It does, um, Melly. I'm just thinking on the listener who who will uh, catch up, you know, with this recording. Yeah. And those might be some questions, you know, how could we make a referral? Where could uh, a person go, you know, post-COVID? And yeah those type of examples and it, uh, certainly the details at the end of this as well will be very useful. Thank okay. you. That's great. Okay. So um, we'll just go on then with our presentation. So this is really, uh, oops. So this is a, a picture of everybody zooming away there, the way, uh, the way we do. Um, and uh, everybody is able to connect. You can see there, there's, there's different age groups, different uh, needs and so on, and uh, everybody's intent on whatever has been discussed. This chap here with a cap called Steve, he would be the facilitator of that, that group. So this, Pamela, pa pass over to you again, uh, just in relation to our carers program. Yes, thank you, Melanie. Um, yes, our CARES networks, um, as I say, um, before COVID, there was about three CARES networks throughout Northern Ireland, and one of those was based within OMA, within um, the Western Trust. Um, what we find is that the virtual programme has worked really well with CARES because they don't need to have to organise, you know, someone to come in to sit with their loved ones um, or if they need any help or advice. Um, because unfortunately, even though we are in the middle of the pandemic, brain injuries are still are still happening and those carers do need support during these, you know, life changing, this life changing time. Um, so what we have is a programme which runs on the first Monday of every month and um, it is for um, from seven to eight and we, have, we cover a range of topics. We also link in with the carers coordinators within each trust area as well and, um, and, and give information in relation to other programmes that may also be out there that will benefit them. And um, so again, this link is sent out prior to the session and they run via Zoom as well. Okay, so <laughs> anybody can, can link on to that. Uh, and again, just Pamela or Kelly, the contacts are at the end. So this, I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview about Headway UK, what, what else that we would be involved with. You can see on the left hand side, we have a, a news, a magazine really of Headway. Um, and there's a little prompt for if you're buying a bike over Christmas, make sure you get a helmet to protect your melon. So you can, you can sign up from that at headway.org.uk. This card may be of use to folk, um, I was thinking maybe of you in, in the Ulster too, um, folk who may have brain, brain injury and, and maybe um, that, that physically they, they um, maybe have some difficulty and, and it's not obvious what's, what's wrong and the brain injury identity card may be of, of use to, to, the, to them. Um, I have a short video which I think I have to, hold on a second, I think I have to share my computer sign to let it's just a short video just to explain what this is. 
Hi, mate. Where are you off to? Um, uh, I say, mate. Mate, can you take me to the um, station? No way, mate. Look at the state of you. You're clearly drunk. You're not coming in my cab. The effects of brain injury can often be hidden or misunderstood and can include problems with speech, memory and social interaction. Hiya, mate. Where are you off to? Can you take me to the station? No way, mate. You're clearly drunk. But... Actually, I've got a brain, a brain injury. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'll be happy to take you. For more information or to apply for a Headway brain injury identity card, visit headway.org.uk. So again, that's just a simple way of maybe getting some, some support for stop that. Okay. Hi, my name is Mark and I'm a key runner and I completed my first... We don't want to know about Mark, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, we also uh, would have um, some engagement with um, lobbying as well and this is just a recent story. Uh, where uh, prior brain injury was brought to government uh, attention again to improve neural rehabilitation services for brain injury survivors. So we, we would be recognised um, as uh, important parts of those conversations. There's also a number of fact sheets on our Headway website and they are under a whole range of titles and topics. So it's just a question of going on to the information library and, and having a check out for those. We have an emergency fund, you can see on the right hand side there, it's a, a sum of money, it's a limited sum of money, but it's a, it's a financial support when brain injury strikes and a lot of people find, uh, like Emma said, she spent some time in the Royal, um, like travel expenses and so on for families that can cost a lot. So the emergency um, headway fund is there where, where folk can apply for that. And again, it's, uh, the link is on the uh, website. We also have a, a helpline um, and sometimes it's just a question of speaking to folk and, and asking a question and nothing is stupid or silly as it says there, whether it seemed like the dafted question in the world or the most serious of matters, you know, we're, we're more than happy to, to answer those questions and repeatedly answer the questions too. So, so you'll find all that on our, on our website. Um, this is also a brain injury, I suppose, affects the whole family. So this is just a short video just explaining that as well, which may be of use to um, share with, with others. Hopefully we'll uh, it'll open up. Takes me a minute or two. Can you hear the computer sound okay this time? Well, Amy, hi. Hi, Will. Hi, oh, well, it's great to see you fully recovered and back to normal. It's nice to see you again, Kath. Yeah, oh, I'm really sorry. I've got a dash. Hope to see you again soon. It was so lovely seeing Kath. Who's Kath? We've just seen her. You always do this nowadays. Caring for someone with a brain injury can be a lonely and stressful experience and can leave people feeling isolated. I'm hungry. The effects of brain injury can include a loss of empathy, emotional instability and memory problems, all of which can affect relationships. Don't assume someone is coping. Please be aware and show you care. So again, that's, that's just another range of service. Obviously, as I said at the very beginning, everybody's journey is different. Everybody's experience is different. So the, the, the website is full of information. We're also across social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the usual platforms. Um, we have a Headway Northern Ireland page and we have a Headway UK page on, on Facebook. So um, you, can, you can contact us directly through those avenues as well. Um, currently there's a, 
there's a little program going motivational Mondays and um, there are two elves taking part in that but we have our third elf Emma who I've just added into this uh, picture here uh, just to thank you for the opportunity for for telling you a wee bit about Headway and uh, I'll just pop up the uh, contacts for, for you to see at the end of this uh, presentation. So that's where that's where we all can be contacted our mobiles and our email addresses. So, um, oh, sorry, John, you couldn't see the video. Apologies. Sorry, I was looking at that after the event. I do apologize. I'm not an, an uh, audio technician, but you'll see the link on the uh, slides that you can click on yourselves and, and, and see the, the uh, information there. Apologies. You're fine. The audio was very uh, self-explanatory. Yeah, the audio covered it, really. Thank you. Melanie, um, I'm just thinking there, uh, we're coming near the end of our scheduled time. Now, is there anything that uh, any of the rest of your team would like to say before I do the con uh, concluding comments? Um, no, Louise, thank you again for the opportunity to be able to, to come and to share. Um, bit about what Headway um, does and um, how um, we are supporting those individuals, you know, living within the, the Western Trust area. Emma, yeah. you anything you want to add? No, just really thank you. Um, it's just nice to have an opportunity to tell people about Headway because sometimes I think, sometimes I meet people who have brain injuries and they've never heard of Headway and so I think it's quite good to get us out there a wee bit more. Yeah. Um, I want to personally thank you as well for taking time out of your schedule to be part of Disability Awareness Week. Um, I, I must say I have learned a huge amount today in regards to what your service is, what your service does. And importantly, um, we would like to be sharing this beyond Disability Week um, with colleagues, with our Be Well teams, with our participants. It will um, be such a signposting exercise to create awareness about something that's sometimes not often spoken about enough, in my opinion, uh, a brain injury. Because I think we, you know, I know several people with brain injury, but I didn't know so much about headway until recent times. So it has been very, very valuable. Personally, I'd uh, like to thank Emma as well in regards to sharing your, your story and your experience, because I think that will give people an opportunity to come forward and utilize the services and speak out more. And also um, know that there is options out there after brain injury. So, uh, and also to yourself, Pamela and Melanie, um, it's a wealth of knowledge. And I'm very thankful uh, that we have recorded this session to, to share with others. And I look forward to working with you in the future. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. So, at least we all know each other now. We can all uh, get in touch. And once once we're allowed to re-emerge, <laughs> well, it'll be great. <laughs>